Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access where I'm going to discuss whether the NERV engine is still useful anymore with the release of the new extendable nozzle engines like the Coronet, especially the Coronet because it's in the same general class as the NERV engine. So previously we had the Terrier engine in Kerbal Space Program 1, we had the little Terrier and it's really good and it's a good competitor for the NERV engine but it's got a vacuum specific impulse, it's efficiency at the bottom of that list of numbers there is 335 seconds. So we want a higher number there and now the coronet gets 375 and it's lighter. Note that the mass is 0.45 tons compared to the terrier's 0.5. Now in a career mode we would expect that the extendable nozzle engine, the coronet is going to be higher up in the tech tree. Also it gets less thrust. But that's not as important as one might think. You just have to sit through a longer burn time. Because functionally, these are both going to be used in space where, you know, you can take as long as you want. Now, what about the nerve engine? Well, the nerve engine is down here with the hydrogen engines. In Kerbal Space Program 1, it used to use liquid fuel. Now it doesn't. And it's in special tanks that are really large because hydrogen is not very dense. And so that's a drawback. It has a whopping 900 seconds of vacuum specific impulse. So it's more than double the efficiency of the other engines. So you would think, and this is why we have to discuss it, uh, you would think that it's obviously better because it's got such high efficiency. Why wouldn't it be the obvious choice once we unlock it in the tech tree? But you look at the mass, its mass is three tons, and at a mass of three tons, it is more than six times the mass of the Coronet engine. And that's a bit of a problem, especially since we also have this engine, which is 10 tons, that is much more efficient. And so at some point, we would stop using the nerve engine and want to use this engine. Now, it might be much higher in the tech tree, but it sort of limits the usefulness of the nerve when we have this engine. This engine is three times the mass of the nerve engine, but has 10 times the thrust and is more efficient. So as long as our sort of payload and fuel assembly is about three tons heavier than what we would say would be the natural load for the nerve, we should be using this one. But let's just uh, compare the coronet to this first. And so here we have a nice little assembly. These are two of these tanks, but it's basically equivalent of one of the long 1.25 meter tanks. So a total of four tons of propellant. And here we have the coronet. And what we are getting in terms of delta V is 3,621 meters per second. The mass of this, and we've just got the pod at the top with a heat shield and parachute, uh, is 6.838 uh, tons. So that's the total mass that uh, an eventual rocket would have to push. So we do have to be concerned about how the eventual rocket is going to do. So that's 6.38 tons, and we get 3,621 meters per second, which is sort of the natural level for the coronet engine. If you were going to make an ideal coronet stage, it'd be about this size. So we have this. Now, it looks like a huge tank, but again, the hydrogen is not very dense. So we've got a form factor problem where we're going to have to put an adapter here. That's an annoyance that we're quite, totally going to ignore. Um, we just got to set that aside for now. There's only 2.5 tons of propellant. So it's 1.5 tons less than what we have over here. But the engine is 2.5 tons or 2.55 tons more than the coronet engine. So we're still one ton heavier. And the net result in this assembly is that we don't get that much more uh, delta V. Instead, we have more mass, actually. We have 7.25 tons to get basically the same amount of delta V as this little bit here. Isn't that incredible? And you might be thinking, well, this has doubled the thrust of the coronet. The, the coronet has 38 kilonewtons. This has 70. So at least the burn time would be less, right? Well, it is less but not as uh, much as you might think because its efficiency means that it burns through the fuel slower. So <laughs> that's the catch, right? Uh, the higher the specific impulse, the slower you burn the fuel. And so the amount of time the coronet takes to burn through this fuel is roughly six minutes and 28 seconds. The time that the nerve takes to burn through this fuel is nearly five minutes. So even though it's double the thrust, it only gets to delta V in maybe a minute faster. 
So it's not as much of a benefit as you might think. And the reason why is because it's heavier. The dry mass is heavier. So you don't get as much delta V as you might think, uh, as soon as you might think. So that's an interesting result. But this isn't really the natural delta V for a nerve stage. The natural delta V for a nerve stage would be more like it's ISP times 10. So that's 9,000. So it'd be tough to push the coronet to 9,000, but then do we really want the nerf to give us 9,000 in this situation? We'll work with other payloads in a second, so if you're thinking of that, don't worry, we'll get to that. Ultimately, what you have here is 20 minutes of burn time, and this should sound familiar for nerf users. Um, and we would like to use 4x time warp with this, of course. But now it's got 9,000, and it's really hard for the coronet to compete with this. There's a, uh, sort of a limit to how much a particular stage can get based on its dry mass. So you can see now it's at 7,200, but without this tank, it was already 6,800. So it's diminishing returns, and we're probably never going to get to 9,000. So that's a rub, isn't it? Well, only if we keep using the coordinate, but we have another engine. We have the trumpet, which is the next size up. And in fact, the trumpet, the mass of the trumpet, plus the mass of the coronet, still does not equal the mass of the nerve. And I think uh, even if you account for the decoupler, it will not equal the mass of the nerve. So what we would like is half-half, 4,500 on each stage. Okay, now we've got 4,167 there, and that's pretty close to Delta V that we get with this stack here. And we're carrying a lot of fuel, but how does it compare in mass? Well, it's 47.66 tons. So now we've got the 9,000 here with just a nerve assembly, and it's only 15.7 tons. So that's a lot better than what we had here with the 47.66 tons. It seems like Finally, the nerve has come into its own. Uh, here, once we get to 9,000 meters per second, it's good. But, we have the swerve sitting here waiting. What happens if we put the swerve on? Well, it's a little bit fatter here. It doesn't hurt the Delta V that much, and it's also not that much extra mass. I mean, it is, but it's still more beneficial than this assembly. 47.66 tons versus this being... 22.68 tons, so this is half, but it also would allow you to have a lower burn time. But it is heavier. This ends up being heavier than just with the nerve. So if you're really trying to get 9,000 meters per second out of this, then yeah, the nerve is still useful, I suppose. But what about with a heavier payload? How about that? I can't believe this 8-seat crew cabin is 2.4 tons. I was looking for some heavy payloads to put on, but it's tough to find heavy payloads, actually. Okay, that's that's nearly 10 tons right there. So that's a 10-ton payload. Now, with the nerve here, that's 4,700 meters per second and 24 tons altogether. This is also 4,700 meters per second, but it is 56 tons altogether. What if you just wanted 3,000 meters per second with this heavier payload? So we're going to down to the natural amount that a trumpet would like, which is about 3,820 meters per second, which is 10 times its ISP there of 382. And if we try and add that much, this is about right, and we've got 40 tons here. But here, the little nerve is giving us 4,000 meters per second, and it is only 22 tons altogether. So, that's obviously a lot better. And actually, at 8 tons worth of propellant, well, it's still gonna take a long time. <laughs> it's still going to take a uh, fair amount of time to do this burn. I think that's about 16 minutes, or 15 to 16 minutes. But that's manageable. 15 to 16 minutes of burn time is not too bad. And really, 22 tons is very attractive. So, it's still okay to use the nerve, even though we have the coronet. 
and it just ma it's just a matter of how much payload capacity you have and how much delta V you need from that stage. And even if you had two chemical stages and both the engines uh, had a mass combined that's less than the nerve, the nerve's efficiency is better if you have even a light payload and you're trying to get 9,000 meters per second of delta V, it looks like. That's including the whole business of the awkward tanks. But if you need an adapter, that's an additional mass, so we didn't really take that into consideration. And there is always the question of the swerve as opposed to the nerve. And once you get past a certain mass, the swerve might be more attractive. Like here, for instance, we've got 10 tons worth of payload and 8 tons worth of fuel and then the structure. And here, the, the nerve gets 4,000 meters per second, and the total mass of this is 22 tons. Then you put the swerve on, this is 29 tons, so that's heavier, but still not as heavy as the, the methane, the methylox assembly would be. And it's got a better thrust weight ratio, and it gets more delta V. And in fact, let me see how much it gets with just one tank here. Well, that's not quite as much. And we one of the problems with the hydrogen tanks is we don't have the nice uh, smaller ones, like a half size one like this to put on. So we can't configure it exactly the same. But anyway, you get the picture at a certain point, the swerve is going to be better. And maybe we should just take a look at when that point is in this case. Here we have 33 tons and 6,000. To get 6,000 out of this, we, we are going to need more fuel because of the higher efficiency of the swerve. This is about the same amount of delta V, and it's 31 tons. This is 33 tons and gets about that delta V. So probably one more tank after that, and the swerve is more efficient than the nerve. Anyway, so... This was mainly for my curiosity. I wondered whether the nerve was still useful in some situations, and it seems like it is if you're willing to sit through a long burn time. Okay, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.